guys welcome back to my channel it's your girl marina here and i'm super excited to be coming to you in our very first sit down video of the new year 2021 i'm going to take this opportunity again to say very happy new year to all of you my subscribers both new and existing thank you very much for sticking with me i'm so excited for 2021 if it's your first time here you're welcome my name is marina i make videos from saskatoon in canada where i share about my experiences as a nigerian immigrant living in canada i also share vital information to make settling into life in Canada seamless for newcomers if this is content you think you'll be interested in please go ahead and hit the subscribe button below and turn on the notification so you know every time I upload new content to my returning subscribers I know you guys are wondering like what happened to your hair yeah yeah <laughs> my hair grew a little too much i didn't know what to do about it i've not been able to go in for a haircut yet so i just thought to be creative with the way i brushed it so yeah that's what's happening today and p.s i'm going to be shocking you guys like that from time to time during this hair i'll come here some days you will not recognize me but it's still me okay <laughs> well thank you very much for joining me i'm super excited to have you guys back in today's video guys as you can tell from the title i'm going to continue on in the mini series that i started where i've been talking about different profession professions in Canada and their certification pathways. We've already had videos talking about HR, about banking, about teaching, and today we're going to be talking about the accounting profession and the pathway to get the Chartered Professional Accountant CPA designation. Okay, if this is something you're interested in, you know what to do, definitely keep watching. profession in Canada is not exactly a regulated profession which means that you can be an accountant without the CPA designation but um, it just means that there's a level to which you can rise if you don't have that CPA designation there are some roles there are some um, positions that you cannot attain that's the truth the CPA designation is basically a game changer some of the advantages of getting the CPA designation one of which would be your career path is better like I would have mentioned already there's no stopping you you can rise to the very top of your accounting career uh, another advantage is that the accountants that have the CPA designation are more in demand in Canada than those who do not not, right people are just going to want the designation above the people who don't have it and then the third of course would be higher wages I checked on the CPA website and the average income of a chartered professional accountant depending on the years of relevant experience you have had can be about a hundred and forty thousand dollars per annum that's very that's good income right that's a that's good income so higher wages better demand better career path are part of the reasons why you want to consider getting the CPA designation in Canada as as usual when I talk about this professions I'm going to be talking about it from the internationally trained accountant point of view as a foreign trained accountant who is who may or may not be registered to an accounting body in the country that you're coming from there are a number of ways that you can attain the CPA designation in Canada first of all CPA Canada has um, agreements in place with a number of countries um, to is the designation pathway from accountants that are trained and registered from those countries. There are three different agreements that are in place at the moment. The first would be the mutual recognition agreement. This one is between CPA in Canada and US and Mexico, basically in North America, where your designation from these countries can directly translate to the CPA designation. The pathway is slightly different. The second um, agreement in place is the reciprocal member agreement and this exists between CPA and um, the accounting bodies from New Zealand, Hong Kong, Ireland, Scotland, England and Wales and then there is um, South Africa and Zimbabwe. Those are the only two African countries that are on the list for the countries with that agreement. And then the third agreement is a memorandum of understanding between CPA Canada and um, India and Pakistan. So the accountants who are registered to the Chartered Accountant Institute in India and Pakistan don't have to go through the entire um, professional education program to attain the pathway. You're just advised to take the capstone one and capstone two courses and then you are required to pass the common final examination that I'm going to be talking about in a bit. So if you're a foreign trained accountant whose country is not covered by any agreement at the moment, I'm going to spend some time to talk about what the designation pathway looks like for you. The first thing you want to do as with many other professional organizations in Canada is that you want to contact 
contact the member organization in the province that you're landing in. Most of these things are administered at provincial level, so you will need to be dealing with the member associations in the province that you intend to live in. So when you contact that province, you're going to create a profile on the CPA website. Um, I couldn't really do that because the, I really wanted to create that profile and show you step by step how it works, but the information that I need to impute to create that profile, I don't really have. And I'm not an accountant, I don't want in my CPA account, okay? After you create that profile, you are going to pay and request for your transcripts to be evaluated. Now, the transcripts have to be sent directly from the issuing institution to World Education Services. That's what I saw on the website. You can use WES, you can use ICAS, and the other evaluation body, ICES. I'll put the full meaning on the screen. If you're going to go with the WES um, option, it has to be the International Credential Advantage Package so that the um, evaluation is done on a cost by cost basis. After this evaluation is complete, in some cases you will be required to meet language requirements but if you already have any proof of language proficiency from before or you have um, um, any documentation showing that your previous education um, had English at the, as the primary language of instruction, this, wave, this um, requirement can be waived. But language requirements is typically like one of the requirements that they need at this stage. When your credentials have been assessed and you have received the final report letting you know that your the assessment is complete, you will now be required to start the professional education program. It's called the CPA PEP. Okay, In this program, you will be required to register and pass six particular modules. Now, these modules are offered through the CPA Western School of Business. You will have to register with that school and enroll for these modules. There are six particular modules that you must pass in the education portion of the designation. Okay, The modules that you are required to pass are Audit and Assurance, Taxation, Finance, strategy and governance, management accounting, and financial reporting. I wrote that down. I was reading that from somewhere. <laughs> so when you um, register and you pass these six modules, then you will be required to pass the common final examination CFE. It is almost like the NKE equivalent when it's HR. This is typically how these designations are laid out. You pass some courses and then you take like a general exam. After you have passed the CFE exam, the next step will now be to gather relevant experience. In fact, on the website, it's the designation, the, the pathway to the CPA designation is listed as the three E's, education, exam, and experience. Okay, so after you have done the six modules, that's the education portion, and then you pass the exam, that's the, ex that's the exam portion, and then it will now come down to um, the relevant experience. Now, it is really the e um, experience you need is not just blanket accounting experience. You need relevant experience. One of the ways that you can fulfill the practical um, experience requirement, PER, is if you have an employer, if you're working in an organization that is pre approved for CPA experience, you will be supervised in the roles that you take on. And then, after the minimum duration, which is 30 months, your employer is going to fill out a form to um, the CPA highlighting the experience that you have gathered and the competency that you have built over that time. When that is done, CPA is going to now assess the experience that you have had and if they deem it okay, you can now get the CPA designation. The other way that you can get this experience is you don't have to work with a pre-approved employer, but you have to be doing work that revolves around these modules where you should have been building competency. So while you're doing the work, two times a year, you will be required to submit um, experience reports to the CPA. Also, two times a year, you will be required to meet with a mentor. So CPA has a mentorship program where future CPAs are paired with mentors that you must be meeting with um, on a regular basis. I think the minimum requirement is twice a year. You must submit documentation to show that you have completed these meetings with your mentor alongside your experience report. So two times a year you submit that report, two times a year you meet with your mentor and you submit documentation to show all of this to the CPA for a minimum of 30 months. So it is a minimum of, it's after you have gotten work experience for a minimum of 30 months, you are deemed um, to have fulfilled the practical experience requirements. So you must do this 
regularly you can't miss it and you cannot do cpa without a mentor you must be paired with a mentor that means you must be in the mentorship program so after you have done this for a minimum of 30 months you will now apply as in submit your documentation to the cpa to show that you have met that minimum cpa will then assess the experience again to be sure that all you have put down is it meets all the requirements it meets the the template with which they judge what experience is relevant after that assessment is done that is when you are deemed to be eligible for the cpa designation it sounds like it's a lot but this is typically what a number of um professions it's a it's typically what a number of these professional associations it's just the 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 layout to their pathways is almost similar okay the first thing you have to do is assess your previous um, credentials then you have to take additional training here this training is like canada focused so it is important that you must get those trainings you get that training then you pass the exam and then you have to gather experience for a minimum duration of time before you get the designation they are about the same but uh, this is what it is to get the chartered professional accountant designation Again, a lot of it depends on the province that you're landing in. The member associations usually just lay out what, you're, what is required of you, but mainly this is what it is, right? Mainly this is like the general information that would, re, would apply to you regardless of the province that you're living in, okay? If you have any questions about this, guys, please leave them in the comment section below. If you prefer to send an email, my email address is always in the description box of all my videos. So do well to check the description box. You'll find my email address. You can send me an email and we'll take it from there. Anyway, guys, thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you found it helpful. I'm still going to be bringing information for nursing and for social work. Those are the two I have pending at the moment, depending on the volume. I'm just grouping them together based on the volume of requests that I've received over time. Okay, I'll be bringing those to you um, soon. I don't want you to miss that. So please make sure that you're subscribed to my channel, turn on the notification so you know when I release those videos. Okay, well, thank you very much for watching this video, guys. I hope you found it helpful. If you did, please do well to share this video to your network share this video to other people who you think would need information like this thank you so much for watching this video guys guys please don't forget to subscribe on your way out and until i come your way in my next video it is marina saying thank you and have an awesome day bye guys